The largest U.S. food company, Tyson Foods, citing the new tax law as contributing to a record quarter earlier this month. Companies taking the opportunity to announce some plans to spend more than $100 million on one-time cash bonuses for employees. For more on that, let's check in with CEO Tom Hayes, who joins us from the Cagney Conference in Boca Raton, Florida. Tom, it's good to have you. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, good morning, guys. Plenty of news to talk about. There's the effect of tax reform. There's uh, your M&A strategy. There's commodity and labor inflation. What's going to be the headline for you down in Boca? Yeah, so today is a chance for us to talk about our innovation strategy. We have a lot going on. Really strong foundation, as you mentioned, Carl. And we are building on a base of fantastic new products we've introduced last year, but also talking about a great pipeline that we have coming up for this year and on into the future. In Davos, you mentioned that you're definitely on the hunt for some bolt-on acquisitions, but that valuations have been very high. I assume that hasn't really changed in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, no, it really hasn't. You know, we want to make sure that we bring on companies that are going to provide either revenue synergies or cost synergies. Uh, we are constantly on the hunt for things that are going to add a lot of value. Uh, but absolutely, like you said, the valuations are very high, so we're going to be very disciplined about it. And, you know, it's, it is a, a market where there's a lot of attractive assets out there, but we just want to make sure that we're taking the right ones for Tyson to build on the value story that we have and the growth story. We're the only company right now in CPG that's growing, as so we want to continue that trend. Costs, though, are a problem, though, uh, Tom. You, you unveiled a plan to raise prices uh, recently to offset higher freight costs. There's really a tight capacity out there in U.S. trucking. There's some skepticism about what this could do for demand for meat, since meat is generally a commodity product. How do you foresee how that can offset the, the price increases, but at the same time potentially erode demand? Yeah, sure. There, there's a, it's, a, it's an issue that's hitting the whole industry. It's not specific to Tyson. So I think that everybody's going to have to deal with it in one form or another. So the driver shortage is real. So getting transportation and getting goods to where they need to go is a real problem. The costs are going up. That cost has to be played out through the consumer. I do think, so it's not just meat specific, it's going to be all products. And we feel like uh, that's why we have to focus on value. The brand building that we're doing is putting us in a better position to get a higher price for our products. Uh, new products are the lifeblood of any business and certainly uh, innovation is you know most important now uh, when you're trying to play through some of those costs. Uh, Mr. Hayes, I mean your shareholders, we mentioned consolidation a moment ago, certainly your shareholders would be happy to potentially see you do another deal given the success you've had, whether it's Advanced Pierre or certainly Hillshire where frankly many people thought you paid a high price but you have delivered well more value than I think many had thought was possible. Um, when you think about further consolidation options, a name that keeps coming up is Pinnacle. Is that a kind of a name that Tyson would consider acquiring in the right circumstances? You know, there's a lot of names that come up. We're a very attractive acquirer, I would say. So uh, what we'll focus on is not necessarily rumors or individual companies, David, but what is going to be the best combination for us. Now, there's a lot of uh, companies that are out there, but not ones that necessarily fit with our strategy, which is to sustainably feed the world with the fastest growing protein brands. So uh, good assets for sure, and there's a lot of them, but we're going to be focused on what our strategy is, which is to build out protein and to take advantage of a huge tailwind. Consumers want more protein, and that's not stopping anytime soon. Right. As specific to what younger people may seem to want, and certainly some are adopting these plant-based lifestyles, how focused are you guys on that in terms of some of these meat alternatives that are becoming readily available? Uh, we're very focused on it. You know, we want to be in everything protein. So certainly we're the largest U.S. food company uh, by a fairly wide margin, and that's built on the back of animal protein. The plant-based protein is something that is emerging. Consumers want alternatives. Frankly, they want alternatives that are going to be sustainable. So we have actively been disrupting ourselves with investments in alternative protein, whether it's plant-based or others, frankly. And we feel like that's going to be a huge part of Tyson in the future. And we want to lead, uh, regardless of what type of protein is, we want to lead the charge. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.